With elegance and class, the Brothers Bloom effectively hypnotizes its audience into rooting for characters it would otherwise condemn. Canada be damned. I'm going to the Klondike. The Klondike is Canada. Giorgio, you be doing just fine, brother. Every so often a film will come along that has a setting so enchanting, you wish it was the world in which you currently inhabit. Those thoughts are usually reserved for environments that are make-believe, or if plausible, years in the future. With a film like The Brothers Bloom, its exotic European locations are rooted in reality, but it's the characters within those locales that help shape its glamour. Who is it? A candy gram. Max, it's us, for Christ's sake. Whoa! Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Whoa! Whoa now! Yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. Good morning. Uh, come in. I've been drinking, you know. If you haven't seen The Brothers Bloom, you could probably guess that at least two of those characters are brothers. But you'd be wrong in guessing that their last name is Bloom. In fact, it is the first name of one of them, and he is more of the primary focus. Their last name is never revealed, so this choice of title is sort of a misleading mystery. Also, they are part of a foursome, who make up the bulk of the cast. To dispel any confusion you may have, a little context on The Brothers Bloom. It's like an adventure story. The Brothers Bloom starts with a quaint backstory of two brothers, Stephen and Bloom, whose nefarious yet clever misdeeds have them bouncing from foster home to foster home. Fast forwarding to today, they have grown up, but they haven't matured past their criminal ways. Now having narrowed their expertise, they have become the Brothers Bloom, an infamous pair of con men, played by Adrian Brody and Mark Ruffalo, who are accompanied by their mute yet resourceful Japanese cohort, Bang Bang, played by Rinko Kikuchi. Together, this trio aims to con Penelope, a naive and lonely woman, played by Rachel Weiss, who also happens to be an heiress to one of the biggest fortunes on the American East Coast. All seems to be going according to plan, but a romance blossoms between Bloom and Penelope, which threatens to ruin the ruse alongside a looming figure from the brothers' past who stepped out of the shadows and returned to wreak havoc. As is the case with many films about con artists, the brothers' bloom maintains a light feeling. A cute romanticism engulfs the film and helps downplay the severity of this group's crimes. This is mainly pulled off because our characters, although felons, are genuinely likable. Their motives may differ, and their approach is seductive, but it is without hostility. This is a big reason why we can get behind them. Bloom yearns to get out of the confidence business, yet he's reluctantly lured back in. I can't do this anymore. I can't wake up next to another person who thinks they know me. I'm not, I've only ever lived life through these roles that aren't me, that are written for me by you. I, 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 I want to... I just, I want, I want. You want an unwritten life? I want an unwritten life. And maybe that's why they've none been perfect, because I've never been able to give you what you really wanted. This isn't gonna give me what I want. Penelope is lost in search of a destiny and finds it in the brothers. And Bang Bang, well, it's not quite clear what Bang Bang wants, but she's enjoyably playful while she's trying to figure it out. I feel like I want to know more about her. Hell, even the film's antagonist is charismatic. Your symbols, red for temptation, white for salvation. Steven is perhaps the least likable, and that may be because he's all work and no play, putting the job before his brother. And with added touches like beautiful Montenegro or Prague, as well as costume designs like they're straight from the Jackie Onassis collection, 
There's no doubt why we're being seduced with its charm, and why I want to live in this film. Having said that, there's plenty of reason to check out The Brothers Bloom, if you haven't already. If you have, and that's a real shame because it's quite the hidden gem. Maybe this is because it got mixed reviews, but I suspect it's more of a victim of limited release, which I know firsthand, being one of the few people who saw it at my screening the only week it showed at a single theater in Canada's capital. Wish you had a bigger audience. You're the only audience I ever needed. If by chance you have reservations on seeing the brothers bloom due to the recycled tropes of the stories of con artists, I'm not going to lie to you. They're there. As far as con man stories go, I think I've heard them all. Of grifters, ropers, pharaoh fixers, tails drawn long and tall. However, without going into spoilers, it's far more complex and the payoffs make it worth it. The film's plot and how it mingles with the relationships between our three main characters is reason enough to see it without dismissal. Take my word for it. I wouldn't con you.